offering to go fix these. Do, 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 do. We'll turn this light on. Hey, what's up, guys? This is your boy M.E. And I'm back with a reaction video called Hobbies by the, uh, by the Odd One is Out. Odd One's Out. Ugh. If you like the video, click subscribe for more. Let's get into it. Parents want their children to be well-rounded. But the problem that every parent faces is that seven-year-olds would rather watch any video on YouTube than learn how to play the violin. So how do these concerned parents get their children to be more active? Answer, they force them. Now, forcing your kids into activities isn't a bad thing. In fact, overall, it's extremely helpful. What? Forcing kids into doing something they don't want to do is the only way we can get them to go to school. Okay, saying that out loud kind of kind of sounded wrong. Doing extra activities, especially at a young age, not only teaches you important skills, but it also teaches you what your interests are. How are you going to know if you don't like ballet unless you try it? I've tried it, and now I can say with confidence, ballet is not for me. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had to deal with parents signing you up for sports, instruments, and more sports. I think when you're really young, you don't realize that you have a choice. Your parents just start taking you to soccer practice every Wednesday, and you think, Oh, okay, I guess I'm doing this now. But all the activities I was forced into, while I never got invested in any of them, I'm still glad I did them, you know? I forgot how old I was when my mom signed me up for soccer, but I was little enough for the goals to look like this. What a shame. What a damn shame. I can't tell you how many games you won or how many goals I scored. It was probably close to zero. Because I ultimately didn't care about soccer. The only thing I cared about was getting a treat after every game because I earned it. I know some kids who really enjoyed playing soccer. I forget which video I mentioned this, but back in the day, there was this kid I knew named Micah. He used to live in the house directly behind mine, and we were on the same Little League soccer team. He was really good at soccer, probably better than I'll ever be, and he still plays to this day. Well, okay, it's been four years since I last talked to him, mm. but he was still playing soccer to this four years ago. Now, did Micah's parents initially force him into playing soccer? Probably, I didn't ask. But if his parents never forced him into it, he would have never known how good he was at the game and how much he enjoyed it. But that's enough about Micah. This is my channel. I don't remember <laughs> how I stopped playing soccer. I just stopped showing up to the practices one year, and then I never played again. And then my mom put me into Boy Scouts, and that was a lot better because it wasn't competitive and camping is awesome, and I made some dumb videos about it. So it was a return investment. Another activity my mom put me in was this martial art class called Aikido. I'm honestly surprised I've gotten 107 videos without mentioning Aikido once. Probably because it was boring and nothing interesting happened. My mom put me and my twin sister into Aikido, and we both agreed that it was boring and we didn't like it. So we decided not to remind my mom whenever she had to take us to class. And surprisingly, she forgot most of the time. Okay, look, whenever the sensei was talking, we had to sit on our knees, and that gets uncomfortable after two seconds. What is Aikido, I hear you asking? Aikido is a special form of martial arts in that it doesn't teach you how to fight. Aikido is all about self-defense and to also not hurt the attacker. You know those self-defense techniques that are like, if someone tries to attack you, use your keys as a knife and stab them. Aikido is not that. An Aikido <laughs> master will take an attacker's arm, spin them around, and then pin them down to the floor. Now that sounds really cool on rice paper, like if someone goes to attack you, and then you block their punch and pin them to the ground, and you just give them a look like, you want to take me on, kid? I've already got you pinned down. Now I'm not going to hurt you because I'm that powerful. But if you ever attempt to attack me or my clan ever again, I will be forced to use 10% of my power and break your spine in half. And I think my mom saw that Akito was nonviolent and taught self-defense, and she thought it was a better activity than learning how to kick someone in the face. But after doing some research on Akito, I've learned that it's not really... What's the right word? respected in the martial art community. There's a lot of people saying that the techniques of Aikido don't work against a real attack and that if someone's really attacking you, you can't reasonably pin them down without hurting them. So it's probably a better idea to just punch back. And some people who are in Aikido think that their style of fighting is more civil and the more eloquent way of fighting or non-fighting. So there's a tad bit of elitism in the martial art community. Now, surprisingly, I've never been in a real fight, so I can't really comment on what the more effective martial art is. I'm sure different situations call for different responses, but I don't think I'm wrong when I say that Aikido is the vegans of martial arts. Oops. After Aikido, the next thing I was forced to learn was an instrument. My parents didn't... Hmm. 
I should probably try that one day at keto. Sounds interesting. Can I name my child keto? Hell no. Forced me to do this. It was the American education system that did. In fifth and sixth grade, everyone had to take a band class, and we all chose different instruments to play, and I went with the flute. And as soon as I was given the flute, I traded it with Priscilla, who chose percussion, and that's what I did for the next two years. Compared to the rest of the instruments, percussion was very easy on my lungs. And it was okay if we were bad at the instrument because we were in the very back. The first set of songs we learned was on this metal xylophone thing, but I think the teacher thought everyone was so bad at that instrument that the rest of the songs we learned was on this drum. Just one drum, it looked like this. So while everyone else had to learn face and every good boy deserves fudge and whatever these lines connecting the notes mean, we cool kids in the back only had to memorize three notes. A hit on the drum, a hit on the side of the drum, and not hitting the drum. Now those are my favorite notes. <laughs> drums are so great. Nothing beats the drums. <laughs> drums are easy. So my parents tried to get me to do extra activities, but I never did more than what I was told to do. But that's okay. You should at least try new things, and if it's not something you enjoy, well, at least you tried. Now, with all the activities I did, I still spent plenty of my free time doing some other things. Okay, I played a lot of Neopets and RuneScape, and as much as I enjoyed these games, I would say overall, they didn't make me a more rounded person. Unless you count what they did to my horrible posture. People will spend their free time doing what they enjoy, and entertainment is designed to be entertaining. And while it's good to take some time <laughs> doing things you enjoy, just like everything in life, it's all about balance. I think there's a very clear and important difference between a hobby and an addiction. If you enjoy playing video games and binging Netflix in your free time, then do that. Keyword being free time. You still need to set time to sleep, work, and socialize. And take showers. If I can smell that you were just binging a show, then that's gotta change. Ew. While I was working on this video, I wondered why it was more acceptable to be good at chess than it was World of Warcraft, because at its core, Chess and Warcraft are the same thing, a game. But if you spend all your time playing one of these games and it gets in the way of you being a functional human being, that's when it becomes an addiction. And I would bet you one crisp dollar bill that more people have gotten addicted to Warcraft than chess. And that's why I believe there's a bad stigma with that game. Also, I don't know how WoW works, but I know in chess you need to have at least one friend. If I could go back in time, I would tell my younger self to not play Neopets and RuneScape as much as I did. I would have told me, Hey, you should try out other things too, like rollerblading or the flute. Youth is the best time to learn what you love and where your passions lie. You kids have no bills, no expectations, you're not tired all the time, and everyone's telling you to follow your dreams. But not me, I'm 22. My life is practically over. I can't choose any more hobbies. I, I wasted my childhood. <laughs> I'm not saying don't play video games or don't watch YouTube. I understand that my main demographic is people who watch YouTube, mm -hmm. but like I said before, it's all about the balance. Trademark. So go out there, try new things, join a club, go on a walk, draw something. I'm biased, but make a comic, write a short story, find a recipe online and cook something, or read a book. Take breaks, yes, but never stop learning. And when you're an adult, you can force your children to learn too. Happy 2019, everyone. How are you all doing on your New Year's resolutions? Are you still keeping track of those? Surprisingly, a lot has happened for me in 2019 already. And the really big thing is that I got a new dog. Her name is Floof, and she's the best. Aww. And I hate to break this to anyone who owns a dog, but Floof is actually the best dog in the world. So, sorry, guys. Oh, also, this channel hit 10 million subscribers, which is just an absolutely insane milestone. Correct. Thank you all for watching my videos, and it's just wild how many people are out there watching my videos. It's just videos, guys. Calm down. <laughs> also, big thanks to all my lovely additional artists. I wouldn't be able to make these videos as fast and as high quality as they are without them, so thank you all for working on this video, and cheers to 10 million. I guess the next video I'll be working on will involve sprinkles. Now, when I first started the sprinkle tradition, I thought, oh, it's just a fun little thing to do every once in a while. And now I'm buying a lot of sprinkles. So, woe is me. <laughs> All right, that's it for this video, guys. If you like it, click, comment, subscribe. Peace.